Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me. This is Kathy. And today I'm excited to share how I created a light up card. And for this card, I'll be using the new Build a Fairy Garden die set, which also comes with that long piece of grass that's great for slimline cards. And then I'll also be using a couple of the sentiment stamps from the Halloween postage set. It has great sentiments for interactive cards. And of course, I'll be using the Easy Light Light Up Mechanism from Pear Blossom Press. They come in a two pack and they're really easy to use. You just slide the battery in the little opening there, press the button, and then you get three bright lights. And here's a look at the finished card ahead of time, just so you can get an idea of where we're going to be going with this. So jumping right in, I started out with a piece of Nina Classic Crest cardstock that's cut to eight and a half by three and a half. And I just did some ink blending with some Distress Oxide inks. I started out with chipped sapphire, and then I moved on to faded jeans. And I'm not going for a perfect blend right here. I just want to get some color on my cardstock because I'm going to come back in and do more ink blending with a homemade stencil. Anyway, after the faded jeans, I came in with dusty Concord and then I finished up with seedless preserves on the very bottom. For my cloud stencil, I used the grass and cloud edger die set and I just cut the clouds from a piece of kind of thin weight cardstock and I was able to use it as a stencil. And as you can see, it worked out just fine. And I did use all of the same ink colors for my clouds. And one tip for you, when stenciling clouds, you want to actually start on your stencil, whether it be a homemade stencil like this or an actual stencil stencil. That way you can go up onto the card stock and have that nice fade out so the very tops of the clouds are a little bit lighter. So moving along, after I finished up the stenciling, I set that piece of cardstock aside so that it had time to dry, and I started to put these little mushrooms together. Now this giant mushroom, it can be used just like this with the mushroom cap just right on top of the main die cut. There's also this piece here for the underside of the mushroom, and when you adhere that to the top of the cap of the mushroom, you'll notice that I left just a little bit of a border of the gray cardstock underneath that. And then to cover up that seam, I just adhered the second stem right on top of that. So that is what the finished mushroom looks like. And then for the medium and the small mushroom, I just adhered the caps right on top of the actual body of the mushroom. And I would recommend that you use liquid glue to adhere those just so that you have a little bit of time to wiggle around just in case that you didn't get them lined up quite right. Now I did cut some grassy borders and for the grassy borders, I used a different black cardstock than I did for the mushrooms because it's a darker black and I did wanna make sure that there was some differentiation between the mushrooms and the grassy borders. And the really dark black cardstock is wonderful cardstock, but it's a heavyweight cardstock. It's 104 pound and it um, was starting to make things a little bit difficult and you'll see that in a few moments and then a little bit later on in the video But I'll show you how I was able to work around it Anyway after I used liquid glue to adhere the grassy borders to my card panel I did run that through my die cutting machine with the main die from the card builder die set and you can see where I kind of had to pull it apart and cut a little bit off of the edge there because that cardstock is so thick. And it's not that it doesn't die cut well, it, it die cuts beautifully. It was just that on the bottom part of my card panel, there are three layers of cardstock because of the two grassy hills plus the actual card base that I did the ink blending on. So anyway, moving right along. After I had run that through my die cut machine with the card builder die, I did lay everything out where I wanted to have everything go. And before I die cut the fairy dust, I'm going to line up the light up mechanism and I'll kind of hover my pencil over the purple button and then I'll slide the mechanism out of the way and I'll make a mark on the cardstock because I am gonna have to punch a hole there for the button of the mechanism to come through. And by having that pencil mark there, I would know where to die cut the fairy dust. And I used Scotch removable tape just to hold the fairies in place so I would know where to die cut the fairy dust. After I had die cut all the fairy dust, 
on the back side of my card panel, I adhered some yellow vellum. And what that's going to do is diffuse the light a little bit so that all of the fairy dust is lit up. If you don't have yellow vellum in your stash, you can color a piece of regular vellum with a, a Copic marker or an alcohol-based marker. So after I had the vellum adhered on the back, it was time to start putting all of the elements together on the front of the card. I used liquid glue to adhere all of the elements to the front of my card. Um, I did put some foam tape behind the mushroom caps on the medium and small mushroom, as well as the fairy who is sitting on the large mushroom, just to make sure that, the, that they were flush. After I had all of the elements adhered to the front of the card, it was time to get my easy light mechanism on the back of my card. The easy light mechanism is really very easy to work with, and the wires are flexible and bendable. The trick is you want to make sure that you don't put any harsh bends or kinks in them because that can break the wires and then your little lights won't light up. So what I did was I separated out the wires far apart so that I would have a better idea of where I needed to put the actual light. I'm also trying to hold the mechanism in place because if it moves too much, then if I end up pulling the wires too tight, then my little button won't line up with the hole that I punched for the button. So with this first wire, I figured out that it would probably be best to have it go up along the outer right side of the card panel, just so it didn't cross over the fairy dust that's in the middle of the card. To hold the wires in place, you can just use regular scotch tape. It won't hurt them. And you'll see every time I tape down the wires where the light is, I'll flip it over and test it to make sure that it's lighting up where I want it to light up. The other thing to pay attention to when you're placing your lights is there's a yellow dot on the tip of each of the lights on each of the wires. That yellow dot needs to be facing down because that's the actual light that's going to show through the front of your card. To get the third light in place, I did leave this in just so you could see how much these wires can be wrapped. But you'll also notice that I've got them wrapped in a pretty loose circle. I made sure that I didn't have any harsh bends or kinks in the wire. And again, as I'm placing that light down, I'm making sure that the yellow dot is face down. And on the back side of the mechanism where the battery is, I used some score tape on the back side of it just to make sure that it stayed put on the back side of my card panel. Once I had that adhered into place, I used even more scotch tape just to make sure that those wires stayed down. In the meantime, I did cut a small mushroom from the same dark gray card stock and I stamped the words press here from the Halloween postage stamp set using Versamark ink. Then I coated it with detail white embossing powder and heat set it with my heat gun. I put a little bit of glue on the back side of that mushroom and then I adhered it over the little button for my light up mechanism. Once I was happy where it was, I just used my scissors to trim off the excess stem of the mushroom. And then of course I had to add a little bit more glue underneath the stem to make sure that it stayed in place too. And here I'm noticing it's, I'm noticing even more that it's hard to press that button and that's not normal. Well, what it turned out is that because I had the two layers of the really thick black cardstock and then on top of the white cardstock, it was a little bit too thick for the button to reach through the hole that I had punched. So as you can see, I very elegantly tore that cardstock off and cut it with my scissors and that made it much easier to press that button. The next thing that I did was added a whole bunch of foam tape to the back side of my card. The foam tape that I'm using is called Crafty Foam Tape from Scrapbook Adhesives. It's a little bit thicker than the Scotch brand of foam tape, which is perfect for light up cards. I'll be sure to have the foam tape as well as all of the other products that I used linked in the description box below for you. When you're putting the foam tape on the back, you wanna make sure that you put the foam tape around the little mechanism where the button is, and it's okay to put it over the wires. Um, it won't hurt the wires at all. But you do want to make sure that you put a fair amount of foam tape, not only on the outer edges, but in the center of the card as well, so that the center of the card doesn't collapse down. Anyway, once I finished adding all that foam tape and removing all of the release paper, I adhered that to the front of my 
card base, which started out at eight and a half by seven. I scored it at three and a half inches on the seven inch side. So my finished card is eight and a half by three and a half. And that's it. That finishes up my card for today. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, we'd love it if you would. And don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.